coming at you live from America's podcast studio, Eric the Turf Teacher Jones. The landscape contractor and green industry platform for success. This is the Podscape brought to you by LMN Software. And welcome everyone to the Podscape brought to you by yours truly, the Turf Teacher and LMN Software. And we are going to discuss employee management today, this morning, bright and early Friday. So, you know, happy weekend. Uh, It is among us. We've worked hard all week. And now we're going to talk about employee management because that is always, always the topic of discussion, no matter where the turf teacher's at. If I'm giving a webinar via Zoom every Tuesday and Thursday night, that's what we talk about. It is. I don't care if we're doing a pesticide credit. The topic always comes up. Where do we find good employees? How do we keep them? How do we retain them? How do we train them? The whole nine yards. If I'm face-to-face, I'm always getting questions about where do I find employees. I get phone calls every day from contractors all in North Carolina wanting to get in front of my students because everyone needs help right now. We cannot find enough young people coming into the trades to the green industry, to keep our businesses going. And it's sad. It's sad. And that's what we're going to discuss today on the Podscape while you're out working. So just sit back, put in your headphones, and let's discuss employee management. Before we get started today, I want to give a big shout out to LMN Software because none of this would be possible without them. I've personally been using their software in my own company, and so far it's been a complete game changer for my business. LMN is the most comprehensive landscape business management software in the industry. From budgeting, estimating, CRM, time tracking, and so much more, it's a simple do-it tool for your landscape business and provides a platform to scale your company to the next level. And the best part about LMN is they have a free version, which you can begin using today if you choose to. Just visit golmn.com forward slash free to learn more and start taking advantage of the software that's helped me grow my business into a successful, sustainable, and profitable company. That's golmn.com dot com forward slash free g o l m n dot com forward slash free eric the turf teacher jones teaching you life lessons business strategies and leadership let's grow together interviewing and hiring uh that uh employee So employees should start off with a few fundamental qualities. Are they qualified for the position? And guys, that that starts with you. What is the type of individual you're looking for? Do you want them to have minimum qualifications like a certificate from a community college, a certificate from one of the trades associations? Do you want that associate's degree? Do you want a manager that has a bachelor's degree? And I know here starting in January of 2020, there are some new Um, labor laws that are coming into effect about salaried employees. And I'm waiting on our um, payroll company to send us that information. I wish I'd have had it to bring it into this lecture. But, you know, there's certain definitions um, by the government that stating who can be a salaried employee or not. And they were talking about individuals that work in the field and actually perform labor services are entitled to overtime work. And so you can't have a, a guy on a mowing crew that's uh, salaried. They are going to have to be hourly and given that chance to uh, to make overtime. So, but you have to set the qualifications uh, for the individuals that you're hiring. Uh, are they motivated to do the job and do they show initiative? Well, I think somebody that's coming out of a community college or or a university that's got a degree in horticulture, landscape architecture, they're motivated. They they know what they want to do. What scares me though is that a lot of these Individuals think that they're going to get hired for $25, $30 off the bat, be given a clipboard and a pickup truck and not have to work. That's what scares me with a lot of people. And I tell them straight up, guys, this is hard work. You're going to be doing Emmanuel labor. You're going to be toting block. You're going to be spreading mulch. You're going to be running a weed eater. You have to let them know what you're doing. And so you need to have the different positions that are available in your company, whether it's a maintenance crew, pruning crew, hardscape crew, irrigation crew, you need to have all of these jobs outlined and have a job description for them. And that will let you know, hey, 
Um, do you want to do this type of work? Here it is. Here's our job description. Are you highly motivated enough to do this? Are they responsible for their work and actions? Well, if they don't have a driver's license, uh, they're not going to be responsible to begin with. And that seems to be our biggest issue. We put an ad out there uh, for employment. And the first thing we say is must have driver's license. And, you know, we put in there, don't even call if you don't have a driver's license. And that is absolutely ridiculous. But they still call anyway. And they're like, hey, I don't have a driver's license. I've got two DWIs in the last two years. So I won't get my license back for five years or whatever. That's that's showing irresponsibility and you don't want them to be a part um, of your company. Uh, dependable to show up on time and to keep work commitments. <laughs> you got to ask them straight up. And I know, guys, you uh, there's certain questions you don't ask, um, you know, during an interview. But you, just by talking to them, hey, you know, what, what's your hobbies like? You know, what do you like? What do you like doing after work? Things of that nature. You can pick up on a lot. And when you hear somebody say, hey, I like taking my kid to the ball field. I like doing this. You know, my wife, she's she's salaried uh, somewhere. Or, uh, or she's an hourly employee somewhere, so she's got to work as many hours as she can. So I kind of like, I'm hoping I get a job where, you know, if the kids get sick, I can take them to work. Well, you know, just start asking questions. You know, what do you like to do for fun? What, what's, 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 uh, what's a typical day like for you guys? You know, when you're, when you're not working, you can learn a lot there and, and not actually ask those uh, questions like, do you have kids? Well, you know, which you can't, but, uh, when you, when you start just being nice and friendly to them, they'll tell you that information. And uh, it, it, it's scary out there uh, because, well, I'll tell you straight up. You know, we've, we've had it where we've put people on salary, and then they're the first ones to take a day off. And they even expect to have the rainy days off. No, guys, if you're a salary employee, you're going to be in the shop. You're going to be doing maintenance work and things of that nature. Uh, the hourly guys are the ones that show up all the time. And so I'm kind of glad that law is changing here in uh, January, to be honest with you. Um, but that dependable and to keep the work commitments. Hey, I need somebody to work on Saturdays. Well, I can't work on Saturdays because I coach my kids' soccer team. Well, you got to take that into consideration. We're the green industry. We work six days a week, uh, you know, during good weather. And then are they open to learning new skills? Hey, uh, we're needing somebody that uh, uh, we need to go and get sent to uh, to get some hardscape certifications. Are you willing to do that? Well, I can't go out of town and stay overnight. I can't do that. My wife ain't going to let me do that. Well, maybe that's not the employee for you. So, um just be careful on certain questions not to ask them, but you can, you can bring this stuff right here up uh, off of this slide and kind of see where they're going to go when it comes to, uh, to working for you. Asking the right questions uh, is key to finding the right person for the job. The wrong questions could get you up on the stand in front of a judge, and that would be age. So like I said, don't ask about that. Don't ask about disabilities. Uh, don't even ask if they're pregnant and, uh, you know, even though they may look pregnant, I mean, I've, I've, I've been called out for that just to a friend. Oh, hey, congratulations. How far along are you? Oh, I'm not pregnant, Eric. What are you talking about? Okay. Um, yeah, you've just been sitting at the dinner table a little too long. Uh, are you married? Do you have children? And that's a shame and disgrace. You can't even ask that. You can't even ask that in a friendly manner anymore because uh, people will say, hey, they didn't hire me because I have kids. Uh, religion. And uh, sexual orientation or ethnic background, we shouldn't ask any uh, questions pertaining to that. But just saying, hey, you know, what's a typical day like? What do you like doing on weekends? Um, you know, what, what's, an, what's an average day like for you? Um, you know, when you're not working, you can pick up and you can find out a lot about this stuff uh, and not ask these direct questions. Here are some areas to cover during the job interview that will be helpful in determining if an employee is the right fit for your company. Uh, do you have the ability to work with others? No, I, I want to work by myself. Well, stick them on a pruning crew. Um, ability to handle conflict. That's that's a hard one. Everybody's going to say, yes, they can handle conflict. So I, you're not going to get a truthful answer on that. Expect, what are your expectations of the job? Let them tell you. Uh, what you think, you know, what do you think you're going to be doing here? Well, I hope I get that pickup truck, that clipboard, and I hope the truck's new because I don't like riding in a dirty truck and, um, I don't want to wear a uniform. 
Uh, I'll wear my own stuff. I like to smoke. Make sure I, if I can't smoke or dip here, I don't want to be here. Um, ask them, what is your expectations? They'll, they'll kind of tell you, and that, that may or may not tell you whether or not uh, you need to hire them. What is their past work history and, and, and reasons uh, why they even left or, or what made them change career fields or however? What is their level of skill or expertise? And, of course, everybody's going to tell you they're the expert. I like having a weed eater on site uh, at a job interview when uh, people say they've been on a mowing crew for uh, five years or worked uh, somewhere else for five years. Hey, go pick up that weed eater. Um, it ain't got no string in it. Go ahead and put some string in it and uh, crank it up and I want to see you take down off that sidewalk. That's going to tell me whether or not they're lying or not. Hey, guys, show up this job interview. We're going to show we're, you're going to show me how that you can run a weed eater. And um, um, let's let's see. That's that's the first test. And if they can't pass that, there ain't no more questions to, to even ask them. What is their training and education? Do they have any certifications? Do they have any degrees or anything like that? You know, um, Ask them about safety. What about their philosophy for safety? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not wearing safety glasses. I, I got my own shades that I'm aware. I, and I definitely ain't going to wear one of those fluorescent vests that I see a lot of these companies uh, make these people wear. That's telling you a lot. Problem solver. Well, yes, I can pro, uh, I can solve problems, Eric. And then first thing, first situation comes up, they're bugging you on the cell phone. They can't even figure out how to uh, string up that weed eater. Knowledge of your company. Do you know much about us? Um, do you know how long we've been in business? Have you seen us around? Uh, you know, tell us tell us your thoughts on our company and, and where did you hear about us? And then ask them, do they have any questions about the job? And any good potential candidate is going to have some questions. Uh, if they don't have questions about about their job, um, then, then they're just there for a paycheck. And that's, that's the, that's the problem. People just want to get paid. They're not really into it. You got to find that person that's got the passion. And then I know guys, you've heard me say again and again, talk to your high school guidance counselor, talk to your agriculture teachers in the high school, your shop teachers, anything that's got like a trades, uh, program in the high school. And we're starting to see those return to the high schools. So, so get to know, the, those uh, teachers and get to know those counselors and, and show up at the school. Sponsor some football games, basketball games, whatever it is. Uh, have your equipment there. Have some trucks there and really be involved because not everybody's meant for college and not everybody's meant for the military. And, and you've heard, uh, you know, if you listen to my radio station uh, or listen to Turfs Up Radio, you heard my show this week. We talked about the uh, the 3,800 uh, graduates that's happening in Forsyth County, and they're saying that 40% of those students have already been identified as not having a plan, which means they have not applied for college or enlisted in the military. They are unsure of what they're going to be doing once they graduate high school uh, this coming May or early June. That's, that's, that's over 1,500 students, guys. I mean, there ain't but so many jobs in a big box store or fast food for, for these individuals. And that's an average. That's happening every year. We invited every single uh, one of those students uh, to campus last year at, at our community college. We had about 750 uh, show up. So it was about half uh, that showed up. And we got a lot uh, of people interested in some of the trades programs. And so you've got to be there as the entrepreneur as the business owner and saying, hey, we're hiring. This is a career potential uh, spot that we have for you. If you want to come on board, you know, we have some, you, ha you know, work and, and be able to save up some vacation days. You work here long enough, you know, we'll, we'll do some tuition reimbursement and, and things of that nature. So the young people is the future uh, for the trades. And we as the business owners have to make uh, this career attractive we have to make it look sexy we have to make people want to be a part of it and the good thing about it guys we got some cool equipment so that's what we've got to uh to get them out there and show so new hire reporting you are required to report all new employees to the uh, north carolina new hire reporting program no later than 20 days from the date of hire rehire or if you've laid them off and recalled them back you have to notify the state within 20 days failure to comply with the new hire law could result in a 25 dollars fine per incident or failure to report 
or if conspiracy to avoid reporting is determined, a fine of up to $500. So guys, please, please make sure that you report it. You need to have that procedure in, in process. You need to have an in-processing station basically almost when you bring somebody on board that all of these uh, forms and everything is in a file folder and you just grab a new folder that's got all these documents in it and then they can fill it out once um, you guys have agreed uh, on employment. So make sure you uh, report to, uh, to our government. Uh, new hire reporting again the following data must be included for each new hire the employer name the the corporate name so if you're an inc or an llc you got to have that total that uh, that full business name uh, your mailing address uh, your federal identification number uh, your employee state identification number employee name and address the employee social security number and the employee date of hire date of birth and date of hire all must be reported uh, to the state. Hiring minors. All right. So hiring your kids, working them to death during the summer, not letting them go to Myrtle Beach, making them stay home and cut grass. So it's what I did growing up. Not ashamed to admit it, but state law requires employee certificate for minors under the age of 18. When school is in session, a minor 14 or 15 years of age may not begin work before 7 a.m. They can work no later than 7 p.m., 9 p.m. between June 1st and Labor Day for, for the summer. So, you know, that's, you know, if you're having a, if you're a farmer, you're able to, uh, to work a little bit later. And plus, it's cooler in the evenings, right? Or more than three hours a day or more than 18 hours a week. Work is prohibited during the school hour. And so look at that. A 14 or 15 year old uh, can work no more than three hours a day or more than 18 hours a week. So that's three, five hour, uh, three, five hour days. If they're getting out of school at three o'clock, they can work until six. Um, and there's no Saturdays if they work Monday through Friday. So, but if they work eight on Saturday, that gives them seven hours uh, through the rest of the week. A minor 14 or 15 years of age may not begin work before 7, work past 7 p.m. between June 1st. Um, and let's see, this is the minor 14 or 15 years of age may not begin work before 7, same as the previous one, work past 7 p.m., 9 and uh, or 9 p.m. between June 1st and Labor Day, or more than eight hours a day, or more than 40 hours a week when school is not in session. So during the summertime, during the summertime, they can work a full uh, 40 uh, if they are 14 or 15 years old. Uh, it's just when uh, when uh, uh, school is in session, they, they can only work those uh, 15 hours. And then federal restrictions on working hours or number of hours does not admit, exist for minors uh, 16 or 17 years old. So the, these are, uh, you know, the ones that are 14 and 15. When they get 16 or 17, uh, they're probably going to be able to work a little bit more. Because, um, you know, you go out to eat and you see, you see the bus boys. Uh, my nephew, that's what he does, but he only does it on uh, Friday and Saturday nights for a, for a high-end restaurant here in Winston-Salem. And uh, this is the individual that's, uh, you know, gotten letters from Harvard, Wake Forest, and um, uh, West Point. So, you know, he's he's busting tables right now, and he graduates in June. And he does not have anything, he does not want anything to do with landscaping. Um all minors are prohibited in occupations considered hazardous. Well, some of that stuff we probably do is hazardous. Um, Power-driven woodworking machines, circular saws, band saws, or uh, guillotine shears. So we can't out there having them uh, uh, do tree work with us. We can't have them build an arbor, you know, when they're running the saw and stuff. They can't uh, run elevators or power-driven hoisting apparatuses. They can't run power-driven metal forming punching or shearing machines, nor can they drive or, or be an outside helper. And then exposure to radioactive substances or ionizing radiations is also prohibited. So there's certain certain things that they're not going to be able to do. And so guys in our industry, you know, they're going to be running a backpack blower. They're... Uh, they're going to uh, they're going to be spreading mulch. They're going to be spreading pine needles. They're going to be doing kind of the uh, um, the uh, the easier work that uh, you know day laborers can do. I wouldn't have them uh, applying a pesticide or anything like that. 
you know, but however, they can get their pesticide license uh, in North Carolina at 16 uh, for the, uh, for the uh, agri, well, not the ag set, but the, uh, you know, the farmer or private certification, they can get at 16. They got to be 18 to, to do it commercially. So just be careful on some of the jobs that you have these individuals doing, these young folks. Uh, all miners are prohibited in occupation. Again, consider manufacturing brick, tile, or related products. That's manufacturing. Roofing, they can't get on the roof. And so, man, they, they can't do Christmas lights for us either. And then excavation. They don't want them near the trenches or anything like that. So, uh, again, be uh, particular on the jobs that you can do. Uh, we use a lot of uh, miners on the strawberry farm. You know, um, my nephews, they're, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, all of them are driving now except one. And uh, he's too young to have any interest in it. But, um, you know, we use them on the strawberry farm. They, they pick for us. They uh, tote the, the baskets out, load them up on the gator in a little trailer uh, and, and do things of that nature. So they're not doing anything uh, very, very uh, dangerous or, or hard. That strawberry work is hard. <laughs> Um, but employee documentation, these items uh, should be included in your employee files. Again, like I said, you need to have that in station or in processing station. It reminds me of the military. Every time you report to a new base or a new unit, you've got to in process. Uh, but you should have all of these forms in that folder. So all you got to do is grab a blank folder, write their name uh, up there on the tab, and, and you've got these documents for them. But you need the, uh, the form I-9 to make sure uh, they're legal citizens. You need the W-4, W-5, a state tax form, an employment application that they need to fill out. And then policy sign-offs, you know, you need to be able to give them a copy of your employee handbook and they need to sign off that they've read it and that they've acknowledged receiving a copy of it. And then some emergency notifications. And uh, they also probably need to uh, have a form in there like emergency contacts in in case you know that they were to get hurt you know who who would we notify right off the bat but again like i said keep this in a folder and you'll be able to uh, show it or, or pull it right out of the file cabinet when you hire somebody brand new all right key employment laws there is the fair labor standards act or flsa it went in effect uh, July 24th, 2009, when the federal minimum wage was changed to 7.25 an hour. And guys, I hope and pray that you're paying your people more than $7.25 an hour. You're not going to find career employees if you're paying somebody minimum wage straight up. Um, and that, that really ticks me off. I hear a lot of contractors say, I can't find good help. You know, well, how much are you paying? I'm, all I have to pay is seven twenty-five. Well, no wonder nobody's coming to work for you guys. And and I swear, if all I was capable of making was seven twenty-five, I don't think the green industry would be uh, the place that I would be looking for work. I'd be looking for somewhere inside. At least I'm in the air conditioning in the summertime, and uh, you know, somewhere it's warm uh, in the colder weather. So you got to pay people, guys. You know. <sighs> You know, minimum 10 to start off, probably basic labor, uh, and maybe a little bit higher than that, guys. Uh, but employers must pay overtime one and a half times the regular rate after 40 hours in a work week. Um, and, and, and the good thing about that, guys, you can control uh, overtime. So, you know, but it is it is only fair uh, to the hourly employee that they get uh, a time and a half uh, for anything over 40. Wages must be paid on a regular payday uh, for the pay period covered. Uh, so it needs to be standard. We are implementing pay in bi-weekly starting in January. We used to pay every Friday and now we're moving it to every other Friday and we are going uh, to um, um, direct deposit for our guys so they don't have to rush home on Friday afternoons and get to the bank before six o'clock uh, because a lot of times we're just uh, not getting jobs done that we need to uh you know they have to rush back leave a job where we've only got 30 minutes of work left you know we may be miss missing that opportunity of the uh customer paying us because we finished that time so direct deposit's going to help us big time uh, the act restricts the hours children under 16 can work and forbids the employment of children under 18 and jobs uh, deemed too dangerous. And we just talked about that on the previous uh, slides. Uh, exemption status, um, you know, this, these are the um, 
uh, individuals that are getting salary. So executives, so if you're the owner, yes, you can get a salary. Administrative personnel, because they're going to be in the office eight to five typically anyway. Um, professional employees, so if you've hired a landscape architect that has a professional license, uh, they could be uh, on a salary. Outside sales employees, so if you have a salesman or sales lady, uh, they could be put on salary. And then certain computer occupations uh, based on the Department of Labor can be exempt. Um, and so, guys, and me and my wife were talking about this the other night. Um, you know, she's salary where she works. Um, and she's salary. But it, if she's sick, she still has to take a day off. You know, she has to, she's charged leave and they accrue so much a month. You know, our employees think because they're on salary, hey, they can just take out. Hey, man, I'm going to the beach next week. You know, or we do that every we do that every week. I mean, every summer we go to the beach this time of year and I got to get paid. Can I get paid before I need that extra money to, to get down there? And uh, then they're sick. Then their kids sick. So they're on salary. They just take advantage of it. Um, and we didn't really have a policy in place where they accrued leave or sick time. And, and that is the main reason that we have switched over to a payroll service because they, they take care of all that for us. Um, and, uh, don't understand why we hadn't been using a payroll service, uh, you know, in the previous years, uh, as cheap as it is in, in the, the time and the hassle that it saves you. But so, uh, a work week is a period of 168 hours during seven consecutive 24 hour periods. It may begin on any day of the week and at any hour of the day established by an employer. So that gives you some leeway on when your pay periods start. Work hours, hours to include all time employee is required to be on the employer's premises, on duty or at a prescribed workplace. Employee coverage, Compliance with age requirements and application of most exemptions are determined on a work week basis. And so out of that 168 hours, uh, you know, working uh, overtime and stuff. And guys, like you, you can you can, you know, have your your week start on a Wednesday and end on a Tuesday. You know, it's it's seven days. Um, you know, which will give you the 168 hours. And so, yeah, you may work a lot of, you may work a lot of hours, you know, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday because you're in the grass cutting business. And then you can, uh, take Monday and Tuesday, uh, a little bit lightly and uh, kind of keep that overtime under control because none of us likes having to do that. Uh, employment practice is not covered. Vacation, holiday, severance, or sick pay, you know, that's going to be up to you. Meal or rest periods, holidays off or vacations. Uh, and surely, you know, if, if you care enough about your employees, you're, you know, you're paying them for the holidays, uh, you know, the, the major ones anyway. Uh, premium pay for weekend or holiday work, yeah, uh, but you don't necessarily have to do that. If they're working for us on the weekend, you know, um, you know, it is time and a half, but you know, set that pay, pay, uh, pay week, uh, Wednesday to Wednesday. You don't have to worry about that so much, uh, pay raises and fringe benefits. They need to know what their fringe benefits are. They need to know that they're covered under workers comp general liability. And if you're offering health insurance, which, uh, I'm sure most of you guys are doing. And then the reason for discharge payment of final wages, um, to terminate the employee or to discharge it. All of this is stuff that you're going to have to take care of yourself. It is not covered under FSLA. So this is why we need what we need our employee handbook. And guys, you know, I've helped people out in the past with that. So if you need help with it or whatever, you know, give turf teacher a call. I like keeping it uh, in electronic form. Uh, and then print it out, putting it in the three ring binder. And so, you know, you can uh, uh, take sheets out that are no longer pertinent to your business or whatever. So um, easy enough to do. FSLA record keeping. You need to keep personal information, the name, address, occupation, sex, birth date, if under 19. Uh, basics on which the wages are paid. Why are you paying them this? Well, you've got a job description. You've got a position uh, that describes that uh, job and that's what it pays. That's how you're paying them. The hour and day when the work week begins, the total hours worked each work day and each work week. That's why I love a payroll service and the time clock that they provide us. And then total daily or weekly straight time earnings and then their regularly 
uh, hourly pay rate is what must be kept uh, in your records. Weekly overtime earnings, the total overtime pay for the work week, and then any deductions uh, from or additions to the wages, and then the total wages uh, paid each pay period, and then the date of payment and the pay period covered. Uh, all must be kept uh, for FSLA record keeping purposes. And that is um, that's why I'm looking forward to ADP uh, helping us out with our uh, payroll starting in January because all of that is pretty much uh, kept for us. The employee gets a copy. They get an email copy of their uh, pay stub, and then the money just goes in direct deposit. Uh, FSLA penalties that you may encounter. Enforcement of FLSA is carried out by investigators stationed across the U.S. They conduct investigations and gather data on wages, hours, and other employment conditions or practices in order to determine compliance with the law. Where the violations are found, they may recommend changes in employment practices to bring an employer into compliance. Willful violations of employment may be prosecuted criminally and the violator fined up to $10,000. So guys, if, if, if you make a oops and make a boo-boo and you really didn't know you were making a boo-boo, they're probably just going to help you uh, get in compliance, just like uh, the uh, pesticide inspector, right? That's why I like having them come over. Hey, man, do you see anything wrong with our shop or storage area? They're going to let you know, and they're going to be very appreciative of it. So um, I don't know of anybody that's had any penalties. Uh, I mean, if you guys have, you know, uh, leave a comment below on the on the YouTube video here and, uh, and just uh, talk about it. Uh, it's, it's good to know what's going on out there. We've not had any experiences with this. And, and like I said, I don't know anybody else um, that has had a violation. Eric the Turf Teacher Jones. Oh, yeah. Teaching you life lessons, business strategies, and leadership. Let's grow together. If you're needing irrigation, landscape, or pesticide credits, check out my website at turfteacher.com. Every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., we host Turf Talk Tuesday for pesticide credits and have online courses for both irrigation and landscape contractors. There are also several opportunities to get your credits at one of our seminars that we do throughout the southeastern United States and information on our Christmas lighting course. Check it out again at turfteacher.com. Uh, Immigration and Nationality Act requires the employees to uh, employers to verify the employment eligibility of all individuals hired. These I-9 forms must be completed with required documentation within three days of hire. You got to do it. Make them do it that first day, guys, so you don't uh, so you don't forget. Have it in that file folder uh, that you uh, give to them to fill out while they're sitting there in the office. The uh, form I-9 is available for download on the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services website at the URL of www.uscis.gov. Discrimination based on national origin or citizenship status is prohibited. Employers may be ordered to pay civil monetary penalties of $375 to $3,200 per individual discriminated against. Guys, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard of any landscape contractor turning somebody down based on national origin or citizenship. We we need everybody to work, right? So, um, you know, if they've got a heartbeat, they're, they're working for us if they want a job. So, but guys, please, I, I hope uh, that that none of uh, none of us have ever um, been charged with something like that. That's not good to have on your record, and that's that's not being a good person. Uh, discriminating like that. Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA prohibits discrimination in all employment practices, including job application procedures, hiring, firing, advancement, compensation, training, and other term conditions and privileges of employment. You cannot discriminate, guys. Equal opportunity in selecting, testing, and hiring qualified applicants with disabilities. Well, 
there's certain things, uh, you know, probably certain disabilities that, that we couldn't hire for, but there may be a position in your company that somebody with a disability could handle. So guys, always, always interview them. Think of, um, you know, you've probably got some type of job that uh, these individuals that could be, they could be a benefit to your company and it, and it really, uh, benefit, uh, the employee as well. Job accommodation for applicants and workers with disabilities when such accommodations will not impose undue hardship. So you've got to do that. You've got to provide them accommodations and then equal opportunity in promotion benefits. And so guys, um, always, always look, um, you know, look at everyone for these job positions. You never know when uh, somebody's going to be the right fit for you. Qualified individuals with disabilities, uh, employment discrimination is prohibited against uh, qualified individuals with disabilities. An individual is considered to have a disability if that individual has a physical or mental impairment that sustainably limits one or more major life activities or has a record of such. Examples would be epilepsy, uh, paralysis, HIV, AIDS, substantial hearing or visual impairment, mental uh, retardation, uh, Pacific hearing disabilities it, or, or learning disabilities. And yes, guys, um, you know, somebody that, that is visually impaired may not be able to run a lawnmower for you. Uh, I mean, that's just, uh, that's, uh, that's what, that's the way it is. Um, so an employer is required to accommodate a known disability of a qualified applicant or employee unless it imposes an undue hardship on the operation of the employer's business. And so there you go. You can't hire somebody that's blind to run a lawnmower for you or drive a truck. So, um, but you know, you may be able to uh, have that office manager that has a disability that could be in a wheelchair and they could be the right fit for you. So what I'm trying to say is don't, don't be prejudiced and don't um, dismiss anybody uh, that may have that disability because they could be that, that key person for you that helps you run the operation uh, in the office setting. Other labor laws, the Davis-Bacon Act, uh, the Walsh Neely Public Contracts Act. I'm not really going to go uh, over much of this because we got just uh, we got about 10 to 15 minutes left, and we've got about 16 more slides. But then there's Contract Worked Hours and Safety Standards Act. There's the Wage Garnishment Law. There's the Employee uh, Polygraph Protection Act, Employee Polygraph Protection Act, and then there's the Family and Medical Leave Act, which you know that's probably the only one um, that we've ever had any dealings with. You know, somebody uh, has a child, you know, they're uh, given the time uh, to spend those first few weeks with their child. And guys, you know, you may not uh, know this, but uh, men are also entitled uh, to maternity leave when a uh, baby is born. And so, guys, I would honor that. I would, you know, they don't necessarily have to be paid. They're just able to to take that time. Uh, so, you know, if they've earned their sick time and leave time that's uh, been kept up, you know, there's nothing wrong with honoring that uh, for somebody. And what it is, you've got to plan for it in advance when you know that's going uh, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 64, the Equal Pay Act of 1963, the Age Discrimination and Employment Act, the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification uh, Act, and then Title III of the Consumer Credit Protection Act, and then there's the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights, USERA. Uh, I've actually had to kind of use that. Uh, uh, or at least let uh, my employer know and, and, you know, at the college that uh, I, uh, I have the right um, to be activated when I was in the Army Reserve. And uh, it, it wasn't like that, you know, at first when I first joined the military in 91. I actually uh, um, had to drop a class because we did our annual training uh, in January instead of the summer. It was crazy that that had happened. Uh, and so I had to drop an English class and take it uh, the following summer because my teacher wasn't going to work with me. But I go, that's not, um, you know, they weren't my employer, but still they should have been able to to work with me a little bit on that. But uh, I've actually had to, um, I was told one time at the college 
that uh, by a, by a superior that they I wish that I could take my orders and 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 do you know what with it. And so I had to go to the higher ups because I uh, received orders to go to Fort Bragg for some training, and it really um, just made my uh, my superior uh, a lot. Uh, I mean, just infuriates that, that, that I shouldn't, that I shouldn't do that. And I had my classes covered. I mean, I was going to be going for two weeks, 10 days and, uh, they couldn't do it. So I just had to call up retired sergeant major that, uh, made a phone call and says, you know, uh, he uh, has the right to do that. And he's under obligation because he's, he's a active drilling soldier. And then there's the right to work. This is a right to work state guys, which means that you can fire anybody for any reason. And that they can quit for any reason. So, um, you know, I'm glad we are a right to work state. So uh, it, it makes it a lot easier to get rid of people, but you still got to do it in a diplomatic way. And you still need to have a reason for doing it. Uh, you know, you can't just say, hey, you're fired. I mean, I mean, technically you can, but then they also have the right to, to possibly sue you um, for some for some type of, um, you know, discrimination or how you did it. Uh, in an undiplomatic matter. So always be careful with that. You know, basically you're probably going to be firing them because they didn't show up to work or they kept being late every single morning. So that's, that is a reason. And if that is in the employee handbook, you're covered guys. And so the North Carolina wage and hour laws, wage payment, wages are due on the regular payday. If you've got payday set up, guys, you can't say, hey, man, I'm going to have to pay you next week. Uh, you know, I just ain't got the money. You better figure out a way or you better have a line of credit at the bank to help you make payroll. Payment on termination. The employer must pay an employee who is voluntarily or involuntarily terminated within 48 hours or the next regular payday not to exceed 30 days. So if they quit. Uh, you know, and you're paying uh, biweekly and they quit one week into it, you can wait to the next uh, payday to do it. Withholding of wages, no employer may withhold or divert any portion of an employee's wages unless required or empowered by the state or federal law. And yes, we have had all of those individuals that have to have their child support deducted from their paycheck because they've been known not to pay it. And so you'll be notified pretty quick if that's going to happen. Um, employer furnish and certain information. Employees must be notified of paydays, uh, pay rates, policies on vacation and sick leave, commissions, bonuses, and other pay matters. You need to let it know. And that needs to be an employee handbook. Wage disputes. When the amount of wages is in dispute, the employer's payment of the undisputed portion cannot restrict the right of the employee to continue his or her claim for the rest of the wages. Now, let's read that again. When the amount of wages is in dispute, so, hey, man, you didn't pay me enough. The employer's payment of the undisputed portion cannot restrict the right of the employee to continue his or her claim for the rest of the wages. Guys, you still got to pay them. Just do it. Then... Um, you know, that's uh, you're going to hear me say this again and again. That's why I'm glad we have a payroll service. That's why we have a pay clock, you know, provided to us from the payroll service. And so it just makes it everything so much easier. Overtime, time and one half must be paid after 40 hours of work in any one work week. Required posting. Some of the statutes and regulations uh, enforced by agencies when the U.S. Department of Labor require that posters or notices be posted in the workplace. A complete list of posting can be found at uh, www.dol.gov or departmentoflabor.gov. Safety and Health OSHA, North Carolina Department of Labor responsibilities, the employer's rights and responsibilities, employees, uh, employees' respite, uh, rights and responsibilities, and other OSHA information. The Wage and Hour Act, meaning the minimum wage, overtime, youth employment, wage payment, complaints, and right to work laws. And then unemployment insurance certificate of coverage and notice to workers as to benefit rights. You have to let them know that is that is that is a benefit, guys, that you are providing unemployment insurance. And then workers' compensation notice posters. I mean, so those are required to be hanging somewhere in your office or shop. Now, with your employee handbook, uh, you need to have that company history. How long has the company been in business? What is it that you do? How it was started? All that compensation guidelines, payroll distribution. Guys, sometimes it's going to be hard for somebody coming into work, um, working the, um, 
you know, if you're on a biweekly status on, in pay and you hire them halfway through one pay period, they may be held for a, a pay period. And so you need to let them know up front that that's going to take place. What are their benefits that they're getting? Um, what are some of the things other than uh, workers' compensation and uh, unemployment insurance? Are you offering health insurance? Do you have a health plan that they can buy into? What are some other benefits that you may need? It needs to be listed. What are your normal working hours? Well, typically we're eight to five and uh, in the evenings later, if if must be. How do you how do they get the overtime? What what is required for that? What how do they get their vacation and sick pay? You need to have about sexual harassment that it is not that it is not tolerated. That is 100% termination. Illegal drugs and alcohol it needs to be stated that if you know you're found using drugs or uh, or if we do drug testing and it comes back positive, you are 100% terminated. You need to have a non-discrimination policy, rules of conduct, no cursing, no smoking. Uh, no eating in the trucks, whatever you want to do, it needs to be in there. You need to have your safety policies and how many uh, training sessions that they need to attend. The equipment and tool policies, hey, if they check out, a, um, uh, they get one of the tractors that they need to, to bring it back. It needs to be uh, serviced. It needs to be fueled up so the guys the next day can get it. And then any disciplinary action procedures that may need to take place because of something that they've done wrong. Hey, if you're tardy more than three times in a pay period, this is going to happen. If it happens again, then you'll be terminated from employment. All of that needs to be stated. Employee satisfaction. And we're talking about benefits here. Uh, the stronger company loyalty and corporate culture. If, if they've got these benefits, guys, they're just going to feel like this is a real job and a career job, and they're more apt to stay. There's usually higher quality work and customer satisfaction, and we all know that our customers are the main boss. There's lower employee turnover, and then there's increased productivity. And, guys, I know... Um, you know, that's why you can't pay minimum wage and, you know, uh, e anybody cannot, there's not one person that can raise a family on minimum wage. And so you've got to help them, um, with better pay and better benefits. So motivating the employees, provide informal and formal training opportunities for employees to learn new skills, help them get their pesticide license, help them get their irrigation or landscape contractor license. Well, Eric, I'm training my, uh, my future competitor. No, you're not guys. It's being self-employed in an entrepreneur is one of the hardest things to do. And trust me, there's a lot to a lot of people in the green industry. That's like, I will never, Never own my own business. I will work for somebody before I do that. But help them get their license. That gives them pride. That motivates them and makes them feel good. Empower the employees uh, to make decisions and give positive and constructive feedback. Again, we need to talk. We already talked about that. We need to relinquish some of our control and, and, and put it on the backs of our employees. And that's going to help them feel better. Provide clear expectations for your employees. What do you expect from them? Conduct performance reviews on a regular basis, and you have to do that. You have to let them know, hey, you're doing a good job or you're doing a bad job. Mentor your employees and tell them about advancement opportunities in your company and the industry. Hey, there's a new certification out there. We'll be glad to help you get it if you're interested. And then recognize and reward employees for good work. And things such as a polo or a nice jacket or a new hat uh, that they can wear out, um, you know, other than the job site, that it's a little bit nicer, helps them feel good, and it brings that pride uh, in working for a company like that. And the value of job descriptions, you've already heard me talk about it here uh, in this lecture. Job descriptions give employees a guideline for the responsibilities of their job. The job descriptions benefit employees because they understand your expectation of their performance. These descriptions should contain a few basic elements. One, the job title. Hey, you're a landscape crew member. You're a landscape technician. You are a crew leader. You are a job foreman. You are a landscape estimator. So whatever it is that you've got, it needs to have a title. There needs to be a description, including who the position reports to and a summary of the job purpose. What is it that you're going to be doing and who's going to be telling you to do it? Key responsibilities, required license and or certifications if known. And then the skills and knowledge needed. Guys, these, this is easy to type up. 
you know, some of your local trade associations will be able to help you with that as well. And like I said, you know, give Turf Teacher a call. Providing benefits. Offering benefits plans can be an effective means of attracting and retaining good employees. And guys, that is the God's honest truth. Traditional employee plans include health insurance, dental, vision, long-term disability, life insurance, 401k, and other retirement plans. And what it is, guys, most of this can be on the em uh, employee's back. Offer it, and they've got to actually buy into it. And yes, you know, maybe pay the health insurance for the employee. That's what they do at the college for me. They pay for mine. Um, a portion of it, I still got to pay, you know, I think 150 out of a pay period for just mine. But if I was to put the entire family on it, it would cost me almost $800 a month. And luckily I don't have to do that, uh, being retired army and having TRICARE. And so my kids will be on TRICARE uh, until they're 26, uh, you know, as long as they're staying in school. So, um, offer this to them and you're going to get the, uh, the key employees for that. Uh, workers' compensation laws provide monetary compensation to employees who are injured or disabled on the job. North Carolina program, if you're a sole proprietorship, partnership, LAC, you are required by law to carry workers' compensation coverage if you have three or more employees. So once you hit that third uh, person working for you, you got to have it. Guys, I would have it if I had one. I would not operate without workers' compensation because you never know when somebody's going to get hurt. We're kind of in a, um, a dangerous uh, business. I mean, you know, climbing on ladders, pruning shrubs, we're running trenchers. You never know what can happen. The North Carolina Employment Security Law establishes guidelines for state unemployment tax. Business entities are subject to an unemployment payroll tax if they have one or more employees uh, for 20 weeks during a calendar year or pay $1,500 in wages uh, a calendar quarter during a calendar year. So you got, got to pay that unemployment tax. And that's why I like a payroll service because it does it for us. All right, so there's the SUDA dumping. These are uh, uh, more about providing benefits. Then there's COBRA. So if, if an employee is terminated, they can actually continue their coverage through COBRA, which is very expensive for them. And then there is the HIPAA. Uh, you cannot really discuss anything about uh, someone's health um, uh, to, to anybody, guys. HIPAA is a big thing. And being a medic in the Army, we had so much HIPAA training, it was unreal. All right, discipline in employees. Corrective action may be necessary from time to time for employees who are not following the policies and procedures properly. Employers need to administer discipline fairly to promote a respectful work environment and to avoid trouble later. So you have to treat everybody the same, guys. If one, if you have two people that mess up the same way, they both need to have equivalent uh, disciplinary actions brought against them. You can't be rougher on one and softer on the other. Progressive discipline, a method of corrective action where the consequences of the improper behavior become more significant if it continues. It gives the employees a chance to take corrective action to prevent future disciplinary action. And guys, yes, nobody's perfect. They're going to mess up. And so what you need to do is give them a little bit of leeway to correct it themselves. Terminating, you are fired. Uh, when terminating an employee, you want to make sure that you have followed the proper procedures to minimize your risk of wrongful termination lawsuit. Contractual employees, when terminating a contractual employee, it is important to comply uh, with the terms of the contract. If the contract is breached, you may be subject to a lawsuit. And at will employees means the, uh, that either the employer or the employee may terminate employment at any time without notice or cause. There are restrictions that you should be aware of as an employer. So you can actually uh, um, quit. You can fire them, but they can also quit, and they don't necessarily have to give you a two weeks notice. That's why we are at a um, uh, at will state, which means that you can fire or they can quit at uh, any given moment in time. And then restrictions when terminating at will employees include an employer may not terminate an employee for discriminatory reasons. An employer cannot terminate an employee for taking time off to serve on a jury. Reporting health and safety violations and uh, buses of power cannot lead to termination. All employers should use good faith and fair dealing throughout employment. 
documenting poor performance is recommended. So guys, if you're having a troublesome employee, if you're documenting it and you're having these quarterly or monthly um, evaluations, it's going to make it a lot easier when you do have to uh, terminate that employee. For more landscape business expert advice, check out golmn.com forward slash blog. And once again, a massive shout out to LMN Software for sponsoring this podcast and making it all happen. LMN is the most comprehensive landscape business management software in the industry. From budgeting, estimating, customer relationship management, time tracking, and so much more, it's the true do-it-all tool for your landscape business and provides a platform to scale your company to the next level. And the best part about LMN is that they have a free version, which you can use today if you choose to. Just visit golmn.com forward slash free to learn more and start taking advantage of the software that's helped me grow my business into a successful, sustainable, and profitable company. That's golmn.com forward slash free. And thanks again, everyone. And I'll see you in the next lecture. And that wraps up this episode of the Podscape. Thank you so much for joining us here, guys. I love each and every one of you. Life lessons and landscape lectures brought to you by the Turf Teacher and LMN Software. We'll see you in the next episode. Turf Teacher out.